Hey guys, today I want to talk about Donkey Kong 64 on the Wii U Virtual Console. Now depending on where you are, the game may already be out, so I'm pretty sure it is actually available everywhere outside of North America. But a lot of people seem to be kind of on the fence about the game. Uh, if you played it before, you've, you're probably interested in getting it. But for those that haven't, the game has had a pretty mixed reception over the years since. And um, I just wanted to give my thoughts on whether or not you should get the game on the Virtual Console. Now part of that does definitely come down to whether or not you like this genre of games. Um, so, you know, do you like Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, the first Jack and Daxter, I guess, uh, Spire of the Dragon, you know, yeah, games like that, the you know, 3D collective on platformer, essentially. And uh, if you do like that type of game, then I would say, yes, do give Donkey Kong 64 a chance. There are a lot of stories about how ridiculous its collectibles are, and they, you know, all those stories are true. The collectibles, well, I think there's 201 golden bananas, I don't know, several thousand uh, normal bananas, I think. Because I'm pretty sure every Kong in every level has a hundred bananas. There's five Kongs <laughs> to get a hundred bananas in each level. So uh, quite a few bananas over the course of the game. There's banana medals, uh, although those do tie into that. There are banana fairies that you need to capture on uh, camera. There are upgrades uh, to buy with coins that you collect. There's individual, like, mission-specific things to collect. There is a lot in this game that you have to collect. But, and this is the really important thing, you don't actually have to collect at all. Donkey Kong 64 only really becomes a monster when you try to go for 100% completion. Beyond that, though, it's actually a very enjoyable game. It's really not that scary. So out of those 201 golden bananas, I believe you need 80 to unlock all the levels. And to access the boss, you need to collect a certain number of bananas in each level. And that does go up, but early on it stays very, very easily manageable. Quite by coincidence, I've actually been playing the game over the past uh, few months, uh, before this announcement was even, you know, considered. And, um, I'm only, well, I'm, I'm about halfway through, uh, level four, which is Gloomy Galleon, which unfortunately is one of the worst levels in the game. Um... But so far, I haven't really found anything that's difficult to manage. And I did play through the full game as a kid. I absolutely loved the game as a kid. Uh, in fact, I think what a lot of people seem to forget, uh, because I see comments like, oh, Donkey Kong 64 killed the 3D platformer genre and stuff like that. Really, no, because we saw a number of games in that genre on the PS2. You know, at the time, I loved it. Every kid I knew loved it. We were all very impressed by it. Critics loved it. Um, I really don't remember people flipping out about the number of collectibles. To me as a kid, it was just as big as something like Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie. And in fact, that's probably actually a very good point. I feel like if you can manage Banjo-Tooie, you should really be able to manage Donkey Kong 64. It's really not a very stressful experience if you're not going after everything. I should say that in my playthrough, I have tried to be thorough, but not worried about getting everything. If there is a, uh, you know, a level gimmick or something that annoys me and I just don't want to do, uh, I haven't done it. And I... So far, I've had more than enough golden bananas. I've got enough to unlock the next level, in fact, and nearly to the one after that. So basically, my general point is that if you're worried about, you know, there being too much to collect and things like that, and the game just being way too overwhelming, it is a little bit overwhelming in terms of how big the levels are, because they are incredibly impressive in terms of size. But uh, for the most part, I really don't find the game very overwhelming at all. And just to give a comparison, you know, I, I do find a lot of the later levels in Banjo-Tooie to be a bit uh, too big for my liking. Um, the prehistoric one, whose name escapes me for whatever reason, I actually find that to be a bit too big for my liking. Uh, I, I get very confused in that one. Uh, and Grunty Industries, for that matter. So, if you can deal with that sort of thing, then Donkey Kong 64 is absolutely no worries. With all that said, though, the game that certainly does have problems. There is a lot to collect, and if you are going, if you are one of those people that has to go after 100%, uh, you're going to be in a bit of bother, I think. It's a very time-consuming game if you're going after 100%, and it's a very difficult game if you're going after 100%. Mainly because some of those uh, sort of gimmicky missions where you're, you know, racing someone or... Uh, oh, I don't know, you, you can be doing a lot of different things in this game. They can be a bit of a pain. So uh, that's why I say, you know, I don't recommend going after 100%. I recommend just kind of doing what you enjoy up to a certain point and then just moving on. Another one of the reasons that this game can be a bit frustrating is that uh, you have five playable characters. And they are all great, they all have uh, their own unique moves, they all feel unique, um, and they're all fun to play as. So that is a really good thing. 
However, every single one of them has their own collectibles, so they have their own golden bananas, their own normal bananas, and their own banana coins. So what this means is that you often unlock an area with one Kong, go through that area to get their bananas, then go back to the barrel, choose another Kong, then go back through the same area to get uh, their bananas and things like that. It isn't a big time sink or anything, it's just one of those things that is really frustrating about the game. If you could just change characters on the spot, then Donkey Kong 64 would lose a lot of its problems. Because really that sort of having to go back and forth element is really the thing that bogs the game down the most. If that wasn't there, then the game would really probably not have a single pacing problem. Beyond that though, I think my only other real criticism is of the beginning of the game. And uh, that's where newcomers might kind of maybe get a little bit bored, because I feel like the game does actually start off a bit slow. Once you get into the first level and actually start exploring, uh, I think that's where the game gets really fun. But just those kind of first, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, they are a bit slow to get into. So if you're not enjoying it in those first few minutes, I would definitely say stick with it. On my current playthrough, I was actually kind of, you know, a bit iffy when starting up. I was thinking, well, you know, I, I want to take another look at this, but maybe it isn't so good and things like that. But once I actually got into it again, you know, I really enjoyed it. So I would say definitely, you know, hold on, see what you think of the, you know, the first world in full. But aside from those two to three issues, um, which, which do certainly affect the game, especially depending on what type of playthrough you're going for, I do believe that Donkey Kong 64 is worth your time and money. The game controls very well in a 3D space. The environments are very big, uh, very detailed. The graphics for N64 are you know, absolutely top-notch. The music is fantastic. Uh, every character is unique. They've got their own... I mean, they're all built from the same basis, but they all... It's a kind of like a Sonic and Knuckles sort of thing. You know, Sonic's different to Tails, who's different to Knuckles, except that's spread over five characters. The game's also very good value for money, uh, particularly for a platformer. I'm on uh, level four, like I said, and there are nine levels in total, plus the actual hub world, which is DK Island, and I'm just past the seven hour mark. In fact, the game actually says that I'm at 27% completion. So uh, that gives you a general idea of the full length of the game, uh, particularly considering that I actually know something about what I'm doing. You know, as I said, I have played the game through to completion before, just a very long time ago. In addition to the main campaign, there's also different unlockables, and there is actually a multiplayer battle mode, which I did play plenty of at the time, and uh, I remember as being pretty fun. It was rudimentary, but, you know, enjoyable. And of course, finally, we have the best thing about Donkey Kong 64, the DK rap. <laughs> which I can honestly say is my favourite rap. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so basically in general, I do recommend this game if you like 3D platformers. You know, despite everything you might have heard, I do think Donkey Kong 64 is worth checking out. So if you were on the fence, hopefully this has told you one way or another if you would like the game or not. But aside from that, I'm just really happy to see this game re-released on the Wii U. Now maybe we can finally get King K. Rule in Smash Brothers. But that's really all I've got to say, so thanks all for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.